Moving on to the last part of the transformation tool trinity, the scaling tool. Scaling objects in perspective can vary from expanding the shape from one side, both sides, or all directions with different orientation of the scale, like scaling objects above ground or from the center of the object. I'll try to go over most of these variations using a simple box first, then moving on to more complex shapes like we did before. So let's start with scaling objects from one side. If we want to expand it from the right side, all we have to do is to extend the perspective lines for all four corners and decide how much we want the box to extend to the right and connect in between these lines. By doing that, we get slightly longer box from one side. If we want it to extend from the top, we do the same thing with the vertical lines and decide how much we want to expand the box. But what if we want to scale the box from all sides, from the ground up? To do that, we find the center of the bottom face of the box. Then we extend the lines outwardly from all sides and decide how much we want to expand it. Once we have the bottom face scaled up, we need to do the same from all sides. To know how much this new expansion is, we need to use measuring points to rotate the scaled distance vertically. Once we get the distance rotated vertically, we can add it on top of the original box and connect it to the vanishing point, and then to the extended ground. From there, we can connect to the opposite vanishing point to get the whole extended face drawn. The rest of the faces are now easy to draw. Just connect the new face to the vanishing point and connect them to the extended ground plane. And this is the new scaled box from a ground pivot. It's not scaled from all sides, just five sides while keeping the bottom stationary. Okay, so what if we want to scale this box in all directions at once? Well, we have to find the center of the box first. To find the center, we can either find the center of every face and connect in between them, or we can connect in between the corner of the box right away. Once we have the center of the box, now we can connect in between the center and every corner of the box, extending the lines outside the box, and then deciding how much we want to scale the box outwardly. Once we pick up a point of reference, we can connect it to the vanishing point all around to get our first scaled face of the box. From there, we connect the face to the other vanishing point and get the rest of the faces. And this is the new scaled box from all sides. We can do the same if we want to shrink the box by picking a point inside the box instead of outside of it. And this is the final result with the expanded box in blue and the original in red. Let's move on to another shape and try to scale it up. For example, this pyramid. Let's scale it upward while keeping it on the ground. First, we scale up the base rectangle by finding its center and extending the lines toward each corner. From there, we can pick up how much we want to scale the pyramid on one direction and connect it back to the vanishing point. To scale up the pyramid from the top, we need to find the distance we already used on the base. So for that, we use the measuring points to find the vertical equivalent to that distance. And then add it on the top of the pyramid. Since the top of the pyramid is on the same perspective line of the right edge, we can simply add the distance we got from the measuring point on top of the pyramid and connect it to the new base face to that point. And with that, we get our new scaled pyramid. Let's now go back to the same exercise we did with the move and rotate tools and do it now with scaling. So first we need to find the bounding box with this milk carton as usual.
Then we can start expanding it from the base and all around. So we find the center of the base face and connect it to all corners and decide how much we want to expand it from one side and connect it to the vanishing point to find the rest of the edges. To find the distance from the top, we use the measuring points to find the distance we shoot for the base and rotate it vertically on top of one of the corners from the base of the original box. Now we can connect this new point all around with the vanishing points and wherever it interacts with the verticals of the new base, that's where the end of the top will be. Now that we have the bounding box, we can find the segments of the detail. There is two ways we can do this. One, we can see that the melt box can be segmented into three equal parts, two for the body and one for the pyramid. So we can simply divide a horizontal line to three equal parts and extend it backward to the measuring point, dividing the new box to three equal parts and then we find the center of the face in the front and draw the pyramid in its correct place. Another way we can do this is to draw the vertical line of the original box and mark all the segments on it. Then we rotate it horizontally and extend it toward the end of the vertical projection. It will give approximate place for the segmentation on the larger box. Eventually you will have to eyeball all this. But for now we can use any method to find the segmentation on the larger box. After adding the final outline, we get the new larger make carton in this place. All you have to do is to add the top on it and it's done. Here is another example. Let's scale this milk carton box vertically. Not the whole thing, just the body of the milk carton while leaving the top the same. So let's go back to the bounding box. As we mentioned, the box is three equal segments and the body is two thirds of it approximately. So let's divide the vertical line in three and add the marking for the top flap. Then I can duplicate it upward and draw the bounding box there at the end. We 
We can add the pyramid too by finding the center and adding the top flap with the marking added. Finally, I draw the whole thing in a bit alignment. So this is scaling up, but using only parts of the object and not scaling the whole thing upward. Otherwise, it will look stretched up instead of a uniform scaling. This is the one final example. Instead of scaling up, let's scale down and shrink this box into a smaller size. But I won't shrink the whole thing, just the body of it like we did before by using three divisions of the box. So to scale this into half size, I simply find the center of the bounding box and cut it in half. Now this is the full body of the new box. Next I divide the smaller box into three equal segments, with the top segment being for the pyramid. I then add the top flap and top cap afterwards. So the size of the top is also smaller in height, but it fits the new side of the body. Finally, I add the line weight and finish up the box. And these are the final boxes, scaled in width, height, both outwardly and inwardly. There are so many ways to do this, like we saw before with the rotation and movement and now scaling, and it's up to you to choose which one of these methods to be used. Before we finish up this lesson, let's take a look at scaling in a 3D software. Here is scaling a box while keeping the bottom static. The red is the original size and the blue is the scaled up box. You can also scale in one axis like we see here, either X, Y or Z. Or you can make the pivot of the scaling in the center and scale the whole box in all sides uniformly. Here is scaling the pyramid while keeping the ground stationary, or from all sides. And the same can be done for a cylinder, something we didn't draw but you can practice it as well by using the bounding box first. And this is the milk carton, scaled with a stationary ground, and scaling by height only. If you scale the whole thing like you see here, it will look stretched. That's why we kept the top as it is and only scaled the body, so it doesn't look weird. So try to practice scaling objects either uniformly or from one side, or only by height, by width, or by depth, and try as many shapes as you can. It will help a lot in scaling and modifying objects in the future. In the next lesson, we will start applying all the modifiers and tools we learned and modifying and creating more advanced shapes. We will also learn about 3D projections and how we can create 3D objects from 2D projections. This is when things start to get fun. If you like this lesson, feel free to leave a like. If you have any questions, leave it down in the comment section and I will do my best to answer it as soon as possible. To stay notified for future lessons, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next lesson.